What does Black History Month mean to you? Black History Month is, to me, a very special time, you know? Um, it's a time when we celebrate all of the accomplishments of all of our black inventors, um, forefathers, and all those kind of things. But in my mind, it's, it's, I, I see it as a kind of a shame, if you will, that we have to have a certain day of the year to celebrate black, black history or any, or any uh, uh, holiday celebration. In that matter, I think every day should be uh, Black History Month, uh, Latino Day, or uh, whatever you want to call it, because we're all here and we all should be accepted and try to understand each other and the culture and stuff like that. But uh, be it as it may, I think Black History Month for me is very, very important because I get a chance to kind of um, decompress and kind of think about of all of the people, the forefathers that came before us and the difference they have made for for this country as well as for us as individuals. How did you arrive in Utah? Well, I came to Utah uh, in 1971 as a freshman basketball student athlete at Utah State University from Mississippi. So I was actually recruited to come here. Um, I actually, I had a great experience here as a college student, but I never saw myself as putting down my roots and living here. You know, uh, I always saw myself as going back to Mississippi, uh, maybe going to my high school, becoming a teacher, coach, things like that. But of course, I, uh, God had a different plan for me and I ended up, you know, here in Utah. What has it been like for you living in Utah so far? It's been challenging at times, but I think overall it's been a good experience. Uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges I think for for me and especially raising my family here is the lack of diversity, you know, in, uh, in the schools as well as in the, in the community. However, on the flip side of that, it's been a great uh, learning experience for me to teach my kids how to uh, uh, be friends to, work with, live with people who are different than them and how to adjust in places that may be uncomfortable, you know, so... Um, I remember when I was working in the admissions office at Utah State, I used to go to different parts of the country to recruit students to come to school here. And I remember one time I was in Las Vegas and had this parent coming by, uh, African-American family coming by, and they looked up and saw the sign of Utah State, and they looked at me. They left and they came back and they go, do they really have black people in Utah? I didn't know they had black people in Utah, you know? And I was like, yeah, they do. You should come and check it out and try it out. It's a good place to live, you know? And actually, the, re the, 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 uh, the ending to that story is I actually got their daughter to come to school here, you know, and uh, she graduated and had a great experience here. And so, you know, so there's some, there's some good parts to Utah. Uh, I think most people would say the, the most challenging is a lack of diversity. What is it like living within the community in North Logan, Utah? This community has been great. You know, there's some, some, some great people there. Um, in this community, you know. Um, for me, um, I'm, I'm that kind of guy that I think I can I can adjust and live anywhere because I love to get to know people, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it was been, it's been a little bit challenging that I'm not of the uh, uh, LDS faith, and so that's, that's been a little bit challenging at times, but at the same time, I have my own belief and my own faith and stuff like that, and I don't let that deter me from being a good person or being a good neighbor and no kind of thing. So uh, it's been great. I would like to see uh, a few things that I think could be uh, beneficial for the community, and we'll talk about that. What? How do you compare this community to other communities that you've lived in or driven through or visited from all your travels? Well, just for me, you know, coming from Mississippi, from a predominantly black uh, community and, and things like that, it was a challenge, you know. Uh, but I'm, again, I go back and say, I love people. I love to get to know people, and I'm, I'm, I'm an outgoing person. So what, what tend to be a challenge from some people, I see it as an opportunity for me to get to know someone that is different than me, try to understand the religion, which is, which is uh, a major uh, draw to, to Utah for a lot of people. Um, so it's, it's the challenge for me is just being, you know, 
making sure that I raise my kids the right way that I want them to be when they when they leave when they leave my my comfort in my home. And then how would you compare our mine and Grayson's upbringing compared to yours in Mississippi? The way how how have times changed in that matter of fact of raising children? Well, oh, that's a good question. My my upbringing of let me let me just say this start with I came from a family of 12. So <laughs> there was a lot of limitations on what we had, what we could do, what we could afford, and those kind of things, right? And so my, my upbringing was a little bit more um, stringent, maybe I wouldn't say more disciplined, but we all had to kind of go out and, and, and uh, be a part of the family, contribute to the family is the word I'm looking for, and things like that. Whereas I think raising you and Grayson here, I think it's been a little bit more comfortable for you guys. But I did that intentionally because I wanted you guys to have things and that I never had uh, as a teenager and as your age. So I wanted to make sure that I worked hard to give you guys things that I didn't have, that I wish I had. But I understood my, my parents worked hard to provide for us. And so, you know, we learned to live with what we had. And do you think that Black History Month is celebrated differently in Utah compared to when you were growing up in Mississippi or to other places that you have visited? Is there, is there a difference in the way that it's celebrated or are there some similarities in your, in your, personally, do you think there are similarities or differences? I definitely think there's huge differences, you know, because again, if you take it back, go back to my area, Mississippi, there's a lot of celebration going on because you have a, a higher uh, African-American population, for example. And uh, so here I think it's celebrated uh, in, in, a more, I guess you could say, calm way in terms of limits of activity and stuff like that. But the area that I'm coming from is it's a party all day. Not not a party, but a celebration all day long. Whether that be uh, uh, craft shows, whether it be speeches, whether it be uh, concerts, but there was always that that celebration that was going on. Uh, the entire day, you know, it was, it was, it was celebrated. Uh, people were off work. Uh, sometimes depending on where you were, there was, uh, church services and things like that. So it was, it was huge. And then the last, last question we got is, is there personally, is there anything the community could change or do better for, for everyone living in the community? Well, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think what we need to do is, is, is just talk more understand each other, listen, 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 listen. I think I can, you can never say that enough. And really take an opportunity to, to, to reach out to someone that are different than you and, and to get to know someone that are different to you, learn about their cultures and stuff like that and share ideas. Uh, and, and, it, it, and it doesn't have to always be when you meet someone, you talk about religion. It could be other things. It could be about where you're from. How did you grow up? Uh, this is how I grew up and I, I'm from this area and you know just sharing ideas and and getting to know each other on a personal level and things like that um, I always had in the back of my mind uh, an idea that I would love to see just explore I would love to have what we call a diversity I would call it a diversity dinner or a re diversity reception where we invite different stakeholders from the community or from the town to get together. And I, 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 I did something like this when I was working at Utah State University where we'd have this diversity event and we would get together, everybody sit at a round table and you couldn't sit to the table with someone that looked like you. You had to sit to the table with someone who was different. And we had a moderator that would throw a question out and you at your table would address this question and talk it out, listen and all this kind of stuff. And it was one of the greatest experiences that I've ever been a part of and would love to, to see something like that. That kind of forces you to be uncomfortable while learning how to be comfortable, if you will, talking about issues that you may not be um, a professional in, but listen to other people's opinions. So that would be one of the things I would be love to be interested in organizing. Okay, awesome. Thank you for the great interview. You're welcome.